Let's paint a Deathwing Terminator. And I started with a white base coat. Spray painted him with a white can. And I wanted bright white because I'm going to wash him later on, make him look dirty. And then the white will turn into a sort of a bone color that the Deathwing normally has. And if I start with a bone color, it's just gonna be hard to get back to that. Here he is. I'm going to start with his Aquila first. And I'm gonna paint it bright green with some warp stone glow. And this is far too bright for the normal Caliban green that you see on the Deathwing uh, Aquila. But again, I'm doing this, I'm making it bright so that later on I can wash it and then I don't really have to highlight it anymore. It just saves me a big step of highlighting and usually highlighting is something that you have to be very accurate with. And this way, if you skip that step, you can just wash it and you don't have to be so precise with those last few steps. It's gonna save a lot of work. It's gonna be much easier to just wash than to be very accurate with your highlighting. Now after the bright green comes a very bright red and I'm using Mephiston red here to paint the casing for the bolter and I'm also going to use this for the handle of the sword. That way we've got two nice little red details on the mini that we can reuse and also use in other miniatures. Next up, a little bit of Iron Warriors on the gun. And as I'm doing this, I think I already made a mistake. I should have just done the Iron Warriors first and then the red because there's no way I can paint this gun with the metallic paint and not hit the red. So I'm just not gonna be very neat with this. I'm just gonna quickly paint the gun with as much Iron Warriors as I can and then clean up all the red that I hit by accident. As you can see, it's already happening. And these things happen when you're painting miniatures, but the good thing is you can always paint over your mistakes. It really doesn't matter. Uh, just don't do it five, six, seven times, because then you got five, six, seven layers of paint, and that might be a little bit too much. So after a little bit of cleanup, uh, he's now ready to move on to the next part. And I got some Retributor armor, and I'm going to start picking out little details all across the miniature. Like the belt buckle, he has this little clasp there that's holding the scroll, the purity seal. There's a little Acula thing on the gun and the handle of the sword. They'll all get a nice layer of Retributor armor. Okay, he's looking a bit more regal now with his gold details all over the body. Time for Skaven Blight Dinch, which I'm gonna use to paint these parts that are supposed to be gray. This part here and the bit on his shoulder. Now, I've never really liked this gray part. I don't know why. I think it just doesn't look that good on the bone armor. But hey, that's the paint scheme, so I'm just gonna stick to it and try to make it look as good as I can. Okay, all the colors are blocked in, and as you can see, you got the green, the gold, gray, and the red everywhere. But there's one thing missing on the shoulder pad. Now, this is just a Terminator from the Leviathan box set, and I don't have the shoulder pads that are already preformed with the Deathwing uh, marking. So I'm gonna use a decal instead. And I know a lot of people hate decals, but I feel that they're really not as difficult to use as many people make them out. What you need is some decal adhesive. Uh, it's also called micro scroll. So this is a softener and it helps to soften the decal and it will form it better to the shoulder pad. So I'm just gonna put a little bit on here. You know, it's kind of like a, how you would use a glue and then I have the decal here ready to be applied. And so just a little bit of water and with a brush, I can pick it up and place it on the shoulder pad like that. Now just to get it straight and get it in the right position and then I'm gonna leave it to dry. Okay, I left the decal to dry overnight. So it had all the time to set in and make sure that it sticks to the mini permanently and you don't mess around with it and move it. So take a look. Now there's always one issue I have with decals is that they're so bright and so perfect while my painting style is more rough and more dirty, kind of like a simple grimdark style. So I have to rough up this decal as well. So here I got a hobby knife and I'm just gonna start peeling off little parts of the decal like that. Just try to make it look as if it's been damaged, worn and just scrape off little bits of the decal and it will instantly make it look less perfect and so less shiny, uh, less new. It will look like it has been on the model for a while and as if it's been damaged through combat. Now don't go too far with this, just a little bit is enough. And if you go too far, you might even scrape off some of the base layer, you don't want that. So just bit by bit, go around the decal, scrape off little parts of it. 
So let's take a look at the decal now. And I think it's looking properly roughed up. You know, this is no longer a sticker put on a miniature. It more looks like paint that has been worn away after many, many hours of combat. Now the mini is almost ready for the wash that will turn him from White Scar to Deathwing. But I need to paint his tactical rock first. You know, uh, this is one from the Leviathan box set uh, Terminators and they come with a tactical rock. So I want a red Martian soil for this mini and I think you can do it with Deathwing because it's such a bright paint scheme anyway that you can go quite far with painting the base and making the base look kind of wild colors like bright yellow, bright red. It's all possible because the miniature is still going to be brighter and still going to draw more of the attention than the base. So I'm going for Martian soil and Wordbearer's Red is a good starting point for this base. Okay, with the base done, it's time to make him rough and dirty. And first I'm gonna add a little bit of rust to the edges of his armor. So I got a little sponge with some Typhus Corrosion and I just wanna dab a little bit on there where the edges are, where you might have scraped something and the rust settled in. Somewhere around his boots is always good, you know, you can imagine him kicking around some rocks or kicking around some Xenos and uh, that damages your boots. I've heard. So a couple of dabs with this type of corrosion just give it a little bit of interesting I don't know, interesting blotches. And you can go as far as you want. You can also skip this step if you want a mini that looks just nice, clean and pristine. But I like my guys to look a little bit a little bit worn, a little bit hurt, a little bit as if they've been in combat for a while already. And I'm not going too far with this because on the white of the Deathwing, it's going to really stand out if you add a lot of rust. Now over here, these vents, I'm gonna add a lot of rust because this will have heat damage all over it. So why not go a little bit further here? And it's also good to add something extra to the back of the mini. Now this is the part you're probably looking at most if it's on the tabletop. So add something here, otherwise it's just all white. So this butt flap that he has there, let's make it rusty too and just Gently go all over the miniature. All the, you can accentuate all the edges and a little bit on his face as well, of course. And then we'll go to the next step. So after the rust on the armor, next up is the gun. And I just have a little bit of silver here and I'm gonna dry brush the edges just slightly to add a little bit of damage there and just make it look like it's been used for a bit and didn't just get out of the assembly line. So now to turn this Terminator from a White Scar into Deathwing, I'm gonna wash him all over with Streaking Grime. And Streaking Grime is a great paint if you want dirty looking miniatures. And I'm just gonna start here at the bottom and work my way up so that at the top, he will look less dirty and less streaky than at the bottom. And I'll go all over the miniature. And if you haven't used Streaking Grime before, it's very easy to use, uh, but it's a it's a paint that doesn't use water. It uses uh, white spirits to thin it down. And so you need to get some white spirits and then you can use these enamel washes. And it's really great because this dries up extremely dusty and dirty looking. So a miniature like this, first he's white. Now he's gonna be more bone color just because of the streaking grime, but it's not just bone color. It will look dirty and dusty too. And you know, I like this sort of grim dark look on my miniatures. It makes him look like he's been in combat for a long time. This guy hasn't stopped for a week and he keeps going anyway. And yeah, that's how I like my miniatures. So I have here a little cup of white spirits and I use the cap of the bottle for my speaking grime. And every time I put on a little bit and if I think it's too much, I add a little bit of white spirits and I sort of wash it down. And like I said, try to get more dirt on the bottom of the miniature than on the top. That just makes more sense. Dirt gets kicked up from the ground. It's not falling from the sky, unless maybe he's fighting Nurgle, who knows. But this way, it looks more realistic and you get more of a highlight at the top of the miniature, which just looks more natural and draws the attention to the face of the mini, which is what you want. So the streaking grime is still wet and the good stuff about enamel paints is that you can work with them while they're wet or you can let them dry and then still go over it with white spirits and sort of sculpt the way it looks. So I'm going to let this dry and then later on we'll take a look and see if I still want to finish it or edit it or work with it in some way. But we still got something to paint and that's his sword. 
So I'm just going for a blue sort of power weapon look and I got here contrast frost heart and it's a bright blue and on this white base it'll look very nice and shiny. It, I'm not good at painting power weapons. I don't have a dry brush. I can't do OSL. I don't really do non-metallic metal. All that stuff, it's just too far for me because I want to paint fast and all that stuff it looks amazing. It's absolute a work of art to see an army with fantastic power weapons, but it takes a long time to get it right. And so I'm just using contrast here. And this is frost heart, which makes it glow nice and blue like a proper power weapon. And this isn't the last step. I'll work some more on this weapon to make it look even better, but this is a good start. So I continue with the power weapon now and I've got some Baharoth blue here and I'm just gonna dry brush the edges here just to make it shine a little bit brighter than the inner part of the sword. And after this, I'll take a white and dry brush that on to make it really, really glow. And you can skip these steps. If you think that the blue already looked good enough, you can just leave it at that. But let's spend a little bit more time. You know, you don't have many power weapons in your Terminator squad, so could spend a little bit more time. So then a little bit of white just on the edge to make it shine as bright as possible. And by then I think the power weapon is good enough. Okay, the streaking grime is as good as dry. It's not completely dry yet, but this is a great moment to get some white spirits and reduce the streaking where you want to have less streaking. So for example here, you can see that at the top he's quite bright and his legs are very dirty. You can even see patterns where the white spirits sort of dripped out of it. I'm gonna clean that up a bit and all you need to do is take a brush, get some white spirits on there and then go over the streaking grime and it will reactivate and it will become pliable again and you can move it around and get rid of those streaks that were in there and i just take a little piece of paper a little cup of white spirits and i just keep going along the miniature reduce the white spirits where necessary and then just wipe off your brush on a piece of paper so here there's really a clump of streaking grime there i just wet it with the white spirits and then brush it down so that it gets away from there and i'll do this pretty much all over the legs especially I like how the top turned out, the back is okay, but also here you can see that there's some pooling of the streaking grime, it doesn't really look right. So I'm just gonna take some white spirits and here in the center, make it a little bit whiter. And you can do this as much or as little as you like to really get the effect you want. And you can let it dry. And if then you want to reduce it more, you can just reduce it more. Now the miniature is wet again with the white spirits, but I can still work on a few things. For example, the eyes here and that lens. I'm going to use some spirit stone red and I'm going to try and paint the eyes red. And I first base coated it with the retributor gold. And then using this red after it will give it a nice warm glow. And it is hard to get these eyes looking great, especially if you have to paint them twice, first with the gold and then again with the red. But the result is really great and you know, it is worth it, I think. Now for a little bit of blood effects, and I'm gonna use Vampire Thirst from Duncan Rhodes' Two Thin Coats line. And I use Vampire Thirst because it's just a darker version than Blood of the Blood God. And I think it will look good here on him to make it look as if the blood has already been there for a while and it's drying, drying up. If you don't have this paint, you can just mix a little bit of black into Blood for the Blood God and you'll get the same color and the same effect. It will still dry up glossy and it will still look like blood but it will just be a little bit darker and it will look a little bit older. So the blood spatter is now done and let's take a look. I'm almost finished with the mini, but not yet. You can see here on the sides, he's got some nice blotches of blood all over him. But the other side, the gun still needs a little bit of work because I'm taking here some black and I'm just gonna dry brush the barrels and also hit the parts around it. And it will make it, first of all, look a little bit worn and dirty. It might look like there's some coal and some charring over here when the bolt shells come out and propel themselves forward and at the same time it saves you the hassle of drilling out these barrels because from a distance this will just look like there's an actual hole there and you know you can drill your barrels if you want i don't spend the time anymore i'm paying for the plastic i'm keeping it time for a bit of basic material and i figured i might as well just go the distance and do something cool and I'll use some Martian soil from Geek Gaming Scenics. And here's how you apply that. You take your miniature 
and you just add a bit of uh, wood glue over here and this one is also from Woodland Scenics and it's just great for basing material and all you have to do is take a brush with some water and spread it out and make sure the glue is everywhere where you want the basing material to be so I'm not gonna hit the rock but everywhere around it it's gonna get a little layer of this glue and it's fine if it's thick it doesn't matter and then just drag the miniature through the basing material like this and tap off the excess and now we let him dry and I'll show you the results. Look at him now, doesn't that look good? I think this is the easiest way I could paint Deathwing Terminators. I don't think there's any step that I could remove from this process that would make it look this good with as little effort as it is. The only thing you could kind of skip is the decal, I guess, but I think he would look a bit boring then. Now I completely skipped any highlighting and that's a really important part in this. It makes it so much faster. If you have to highlight all those different colors after you do all the washing, you're adding five, six more steps to the painting process. And not having to highlight by starting with such bright colors really saves you an incredible amount of time. You can do 10 terminators in a week with this. No problem at all. If you like this video, check out this one as well.